It's that time of year again, you know the drill, it's time to get cosy. As I'm filming this, it's the last week of August, so autumn is just around the corner. I've said before on this channel, autumn is by far my favourite season. I think it's definitely the season for introverts because it's the perfect excuse to snuggle up at home with a good book. And I love going out to nature this time of year even more, particularly forest walks, which you get to see all the leaves changing. I filmed a few getting ready for this upcoming season vlogs on this channel because I do love to live my life in line with the season. And this year, as autumn is my favourite season, I'm celebrating by launching a new notion planner on my Etsy store so you can plan for your own autumn alongside me. If you're one of my Substack members then you would have already received this planner. All the information to my Substack is down below if you want to check out our membership of Kindred Spirits. As with all my Notion planners on my Etsy store I've created them with Notion newbies in mind so they're really quick and easy to start using and customising exactly as you want. I've been using my own to plan some autumn recipes, switch over my wardrobe and of course plan all my autumn reading. And that's a lot of things we're going to be touching on in this vlog. I want to change up my life and get fully prepared for my favourite season. And first we're going to tackle my wardrobe. I have to say I've been feeling a little bit dissatisfied with my wardrobe this year. I can definitely feel that my style is shifting. I think when I first started doing capture wardrobe I was drawn to more kind of neutral colours so that it made everything easy to put together. But I am venturing into the world of colour and pattern. As you might be able to tell I thrifted this dress this summer and I have been on Vinted and ordered a couple of bits and I intend to go to some charity shops to try and embrace a little bit more variety in my wardrobe. I'm especially drawn to the aesthetic like granola girl, cabin core, really like cozy autumn colours. And I think now that I'm embracing more van life, it definitely means I want to be dressing a little bit more function, but also some fun in my wardrobe. So I will keep you posted on that and show you the pieces when they arrive in a future vlog. But today I thought I would share some new pieces that I've already got in my wardrobe. These products are all from Vivaya, which is my favourite sustainable footwear brand and who are kindly partnering with me on this video. I've spoken about Vivaya before because I really love this brand as all their footwear is is vegan and sustainably made using materials like recycled plastic bottles. They're also able to produce shoes that are stylish, classic and comfortable. So I'm a boots girly, I love wearing boots through the autumn winter, especially living in the Scottish Highlands. It does get quite cold and wet here so they are a practical footwear choice. And Vivaya have just launched their new range on slip-on boots. These literally do slip on. The idea is to be able to put them on hands-free so if you're carrying something, like for me it would probably be carrying like a pile of books to go back to the library, then be able to slip these on really easily. They're super lightweight and really practical. They've also got features like an anti-slip outsole which means you can and comfortably walk longer distances. And like all Vivaya shoes, they're made from this kind of woven material that is water resistant. And I got these ones in the color Nutmeg, which is a lovely soft brown that I'm able to pair with so many things in my wardrobe. I'm especially excited to wear these with jeans and a warm knit because I think that's just gonna look really cute. And this pair are part of their Claire Walker round toe flats. Vivaya are known for their flats. That's how I came across them originally because I often think this style of shoe traditionally can be quite uncomfortable to wear for long distances, but but I make everything with comfort in mind and these ones have a beautiful cushioned insole. It really does feel like walking on a pillow. And they're also made from like this stretchy woven fabric which means they're really lightweight again and you're able to just fold them up and take them with you. And I got them in their design espresso houndstooth because I just thought this was perfect for the autumn. Again it's a lovely shade of brown but also feels like it gives that kind of dark academia vibe so I definitely lean into more at this time of year. I think this will look really sweet with dresses and pinafores. It really could be paired with everything. And they are machine washable, which is great because I am always very hard on my shoes, so it's good to know they're easy to clean. And the last pair aren't exactly autumnal, I suppose, but they are a great summery shoe. What I love about this shoe is they look really cute, but they're also, again, really practical, really comfortable. They've got an amazing cushioned insole again, and they've got a bit of height to them, but they are really, really lightweight, so I think if you're taking these away with you on holiday, they would be ideal. I love that they've got this adjustable strap because it means that your feet won't slip out of them. And They've also got a moisture wicking insole that you can keep nice and cool. I got these in their colour Golden Almond and I love that there's a subtle glittery sparkle to them. I just think that adds an element of fun to these sandals. So if you're keen to shop any of these shoes or any of other Vivaya products then I will link them all down in my description below. And thank you very much to Vivaya for partnering with me again on this video.
think this is one of my favorite journal spreads I've ever done. I just love the autumnal vibes going on. I created a similar spread for my summer, my summer bucket list, uh, which is the first time I've done it. I do, a lot of my journal is kind of like a scrapbook. So I really wanted to like capture the seasons this way. So I did, I do like an aesthetic sort of spread on one side and then like a bucket list. And I was able to take pretty much everything off. And I think writing out my bucket list, although I do a lot of my planning, pretty much all my planning and notion, this is more of a kind of creative, mindful activity that I would like to continue doing for all the seasons. And yeah, this spread is kind of made up from bits and pieces I've collected over time. This is an old bit of tissue paper. My mom had some old book pages she gave me. This is from some wrapping paper. I got some quotes, some book quotes, bought some from Etsy and similarly with the washi tape. And then what I like to do with my kind of bucket list is make it a mix of things that are, well, they're all achievable, but some of them are easier than others. So that's a nice, I don't want to be putting pressure on myself to be doing things. I want this to be making me excited for autumn. That's kind of the goal for it. So it's stuff like find a new cozy cafe, thrift a new jumper or fleece, go hiking in Glen Affric Forest, which is a forest that's a bit further away from me, but it's beautiful. So I'd like to do it and more of a, spend some more time over there. Listen to Sad Girl Autumn playlists. It's definitely like this time of year is my favorite. If I put into like YouTube music, Sad Girl Autumn, it's just has some great <laughs> playlists, primarily Taylor Swift, which I'm not mad about. So yeah, a really cozy, fun activity and one that I do recommend. My entire house now smells like books thanks to this candle. I absolutely love a bookish themed candle. So I'll link this one down below because this is a local Highland maker. The clouds have come in, it's just about to start raining, so it's the perfect atmosphere to get into my autumn reading list. This pile is by no means all of my autumn reading. If you want my full list, then I will be making it available to my Substack members when I do my review of all of my summer reading. But this is just a little bit of a taster of what I'm going to be starting with at least. And as I've said before, I do like to read seasonally, so I do like to try and pick books that reflect the current season, but it's definitely not a strict rule. First one is a nature themed book. Regular viewers know that I love to read nature nonfiction, nature memoir style books. And this one is following the author as she visits forests all through the seasons actually, so it could be read at any time of year. And it's unpicking how forests have influenced fairy tales, which I think is a really interesting topic. And not something I know a lot about so I'm intrigued to read this one. I wanted to share this with you because I got sent this by the author very kindly. I believe it's her first book and it's called Tiny Worlds of the Appalachian Mountains and it's beautiful because it's kind of like a nature journal which is something I've talked a little bit about on this channel. It does a mixture of like artwork and writing depicting all the nature that she finds out and about in the mountains. And by the looks of this, a lot of the nature is similar to Scotland. I recognize a lot of these kind of habitats and species and it's just a really lovely book. So I'll be sure to link this alongside all the other books in my description if you want to check them out. And then mysteries, especially like Gothic mysteries are my favorite genre to read. And I especially love to start reading them in the autumn. So a lot of my reading is gonna be in that genre. And this is probably how I'm gonna kick off my autumn reading because I feel like it epitomizes that kind of spooky gothic type mystery. It's The Secrets of Hartwood Hall and I picked this up when I went on a wee trip away with my friends at St Andrews. And this follows the protagonist Margaret as she takes on a position to be a governess to a child that lives in this isolated country house. But as she gets there, she finds out everything's not as it seems and more and more questions come up like what do the, why do the locals eye her employer, the widowed Mrs Eversham with suspicion. There's an east wing that she's not allowed to go into. I just think this kind of is my favourite kind of book so I'm really excited to start my reading with this one. And then another mystery. Um, <laughs> I've actually had this on my bookshelf for probably about a year. I never got around to reading it last autumn winter so I'm excited to get into it this season. And this follows a mystery that's set in Cornwall in 1972. It says that three keepers vanish from a remote lighthouse miles from the shore. The entrance door is locked from the inside, the clocks have stopped, the table is set for a meal left uneaten. 
what happened to these three men. And then we follow the protagonist as a writer 20 years later that is trying to dig into the story and figure out what happened. Yeah, it sounds like a nice kind of mystery thriller to get my teeth into. And then I was drawn to this one, I also thrifted this one earlier on in the summer because it's dual timeline, which I really enjoy in books. So this one starts in 1940, where the beautiful Lady Charlotte is found dead near a lake in Blackwater Hall. But it's not all as it seems, because her sister then receives a letter from this lady, and it has this big secret in that she's not to tell anybody. And then, as you would probably expect, this letter is found in 2019 by a journalist, and she tries to track down what what really happened. So again, similar kind of thing in terms of mystery dual timelines. I just love that kind of plot. And then again, I thrifted this in the summer, but I've been waiting to read this in the autumn. A lot of you guys have probably heard of this. This is definitely a big bestseller. It's the Thursday Murder Club. I'm pretty sure it's a series and this is the first one in the book. And I'm really excited to get into it because I've heard amazing things where a group of pensioners find themselves in a position where they have to solve a real life murder. I think there's going to be some humor in here as well. And yeah, I think it's going to be a really fun read. And then just to mention a couple more books that are from different genres. I really want to read The Murder on Orient Express by Agatha Christie because I love her work. I've only read a couple of her books and this one is definitely obviously one of her well-known one and I think yeah this is my main classic that I want to focus on reading this season. I also love reading children's books. I tend to stick to the classics like Enid Blyton but I'd like, like to read some more contemporary titles so I've put down the book October October which I think is a middle grade book and I've seen it before because it has a beautiful cover. I put up a photo of it so you can see and I think it's to do with a child that finds this injured owl and ends up looking after it and I think it's meant to follow that story but also I think the child's lost a parent. I can't exactly remember the plot of it but I just think it would be really nice to mix up my reading with a different kind of genre. And then another one that I might look to get is Secret Society of Irregular Witches because this is a book, I don't know if it was out last year or the year before, I think it's a fairly new release and I've heard a lot of good things from book YouTubers. It's like a cosy fantasy which is not something that I've read a huge amount of. I've read more fantasy this year, I was basically reading none of it the previous two years but I've yeah I've started falling falling in love with a little bit of fantasy this year. I recently finished The Court of Thorns and Roses which is that kind of romanticy. So it'll be interesting to see how I feel about cosy fantasy because on the face of it it sounds really fun. So yeah that's a taster of my little book haul for the autumn. I will keep you updated on all my reading in future blogs and over on my Substack where I give monthly reviews of everything I'm reading and I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and it's got you inspired to embrace the autumn. Remember you can check out the via by clicking the links in my description below and thank you very much for watching guys i will see you next time